Bardem, and he will talk about Galilean uh, corneal topography. Please, Dr. Uh, Carlos. It is a pleasure for me to be here my second time in Saudi Arabia. And thank you very much for the invitation to this wonderful meeting. I am um, a little controversial with my good friend Sinja because uh, in my opinion, topography how can I open this, please? Uh, topography is beyond placido. We have topography of the anterior and posterior surface as we have topography of any land. When the architecture or engineers program and plan this building, they had to make topography of the land using a referential value, zero, probably the street. We have different shapes that we use as referential, spheres, best fit, toric spherics, aspherics. But uh, topography is a general word that can be applied uh, to both surfaces of the cornea and to both types of topography, curvature and elevation. That's the first point for discussion later. Um, I, I also a little disagree because uh, best fit the sphere is much uh, better to see ectasia, protrusion, or a bulged surface. The maximum amount of BFS will tell you how much, how tall is the peak of the mountain. But best fit toric aspheric or ellipsoids are perfect to see the asymmetry of the surface, but not this one. But not observing the maximum value, but the difference between the minimum and the maximum value. This, this difference or this delta will give you how much asymmetric is the surface. So both, both uh, uh, maps or type of maps um, are perfect to see different things as we are going to try to show you. I am consultant for Zimmer Ophthalmic uh, Systems of Switzerland, and I work at the uh, Federal University of Sao Paulo and the uh, uh, iBank Hospital of Sorocaba in Brazil. I was the first uh, Galilee user in Brazil, uh, and since then, I participated in the development of this device, and I'm really excited to be part of uh, this development. Uh, Placido topography is still the best method to assess the curvature of the anterior surface of the cornea. However, Placido alone is not enough because a slope is assessed uh, depending of the distance of the camera. If you are too close to the eye, um, the, the measurement will be uh, steeper. If you are too far, the measurement will be flatter. In other hand, shine fluke tomography produces optical sections of the anterior segment of the eye. And with this uh, uh, technology, we can assess the posterior surface, central data, pachymetry, best fit sphere, toric aspheric maps, or wavefront, corneal wavefront. However, shine fluke alone is not enough because curvature is derived uh, from elevation by algorithms. So it means that if the system does not detect an elevation difference, the derived curvature will be the same. Shine fluke alone aligns the data to the apex and the apex is defined as the most anterior point in the cornea. So if we have an asymmetric cornea, the apex will be dislocated. And this is very important, as uh, Dr. Sinjab uh, showed, 
because the the maps and the pattern of the maps will change according to uh, uh, where is centered the data. The astigmatist may be different if aligned, aligned to the apex, to the pupil, or to the first purkinje. And this is very, very important, for example, to plan toric IOLs. And the pattern of the maps, all this from the same patient, um, can be totally different. So if, if you plan uh, intracorneal segments for this cornea will be totally different than for this one, but both are the same, only aligned, aligned the data is aligned to different points in the cornea. Optical biometry by interferometry is the best and most accurate method to assess the axial length of the eye. And the alignment is made to the first purkinje and the line of sight. However, optical biometry alone is not enough because keratometry is only from the anterior surface and all the rest of the data is only in one line. It's not spatial. So why to have placido topography alone? Why to have shine fluke alone or biometry alone, if we have um, uh, a system like the Galilei that has dual placido topography, that has the color code maps, the Galilei, all the maps in the Galilei are color code with the CGA scales, is this is simple strategy, uh, putting the yellow in a fixed number like 47 diopter, 500 microns, or in elevation. So everything what is green will be the normal range. Everything what is orange will be risk factor. Everything what is red will be dangerous or uh, abnormal. In the past, topography was restricted only to axial and tangential anterior curvature maps like this, different kind of corneas. Our view of the cornea improved when the with the inclusion of anterior and posterior bed fit sphere elevation maps and pachymetry maps. This is the same patient with the three main devices at that time, Orbiscan, Pentacan, and Galilei G1. Okay, however, the traditional combination of four maps is not anymore enough to make a good diagnosis. We have here anterior axial pachymetry, anterior best fit sphere and posterior best fit sphere. The paradox of keratoconus is that it is defined as ectasia of the anterior surface. However, the earliest signs are not in the anterior, are in the posterior surface, and not ectasia, asymmetry signs, asymmetric signs. So presently, we use eight maps or two windows. The anterior axial map, the total corneal power map, the posterior axial with a special scale in order to read this map exactly as we learned it in the anterior, the posterior best fit sphere here, the anterior tangential, the anterior BFTA, the pachymetry map, and the posterior BFTA. This anterior BFTA is very close related with the total corneal coma, and the posterior BFTA I presently call the Supreme Court because the asymmetry in this map will discard many corneas.